Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and I am again joined by Paige Dino Pillow Spears. Hi everyone! And today we're talking about Insurgency as made by New World Interactive. Insurgency is the follow-up to the Steam the source mod released on Steam a couple years ago, Insurgency Modern Infantry Combat. And to give a very quick synopsis of the first Insurgency, it was a highly realistic slow slugfest one shot one kill type of gameplay f it's obviously it's an fps and it was one of the first mods officially released on steam for download so it got pretty popular insurgency 2 they want to make it more accessible it's a little bit less uh, realistic so it's got a lower barrier to entry and that all goes to the feel of the game as they the team put a heavy emphasis on making sure the game actually plays fluidly but doesn't restrict players. One of the cool things about this is that there's a very limited HUD that carries over from the first INS to this one. So you're mostly just looking at pretty much the map and your gun. <laughs> there's not a whole <laughs> lot else going on. Uh, it's really hard to tell when you get kills. You, uh, nothing. There's no kill feed. Uh, there, you've got like a little bit of information about your gun, but other than that, it's just you're in the game and you're playing it. Very slow pace. The maps are fairly large, really intricate, so you'll end up, you know, meandering through a map for quite a bit of time before you get to an objective and then from there it's about finding if anybody is there where they're at and then going through short periods of probably like frantic combat <laughs> and then after that it's back to meandering or if you're dead you're waiting to for the next spawn wave to go out so it really just depends on kind of how it goes for you which is why the teamwork's so important because the spawn points are far away from the objective so once you get there you really don't want to die first you <laughs> you want to get something done so uh, that kind of goes back into their whole everything's very team based and objective based and when you do get into combat scenarios it is it's still a couple shots to kill it's not quite as ridiculous as insurgency one but like i mean if you round a corner and you shoot a guy in the thigh he's probably dead <laughs> um, more, more than likely some guns are a little bit more powerful than other guns but at the same time i think most of them are semi-automatic you've got a few that are one shot burst guns but the ones that you can just spray chances are you'll unload the whole thing into a dude because <laughs> you won't <laughs> even think about the fact that he's gonna die after the first two but you're used to, to having like, to unload yeah, most of a clip into a person yeah. in order to kill them. Yeah, and the uh, actually on the HUD, you were talking about the HUD being kind of minimalistic. It doesn't even tell you how many bullets are left in your chamber. It tells you magazines. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, that is sort of cool. I don't know if the, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure if the reloading is actually magazine-based or round-based. But... It does definitely only display magazines, which is kind of interesting you, from a realism standpoint. Have you ever run out of ammo? I don't think I've ever been alive long enough to I run have. out of ammo. Okay. I, I, have I didn't run know out if of it was ammo, possible. But, <laughs> but I, after doing some brief testing, I would like I'd shot I shot one bullet and reloaded and shot one bullet, and the magazine count wasn't going down. So I think there's some kind of rounds-based thing underneath. And speaking of weapons, everything is done through a point system. So first of all, you have different roles for the players. When you spawn into the server, you select a role, and that's things like basically the, the archetypes are you know a saboteur, like a bomber, or a support with an uh, LMG, or a recon, and snipers, and stuff like that. And then once you select one of those, you have your points for the actual gun loadout. Okay, so basically uh, points, they call them supply. You get 10 um, to put towards your kit. You can have a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, an explosive, armor, and a vest. Now, you don't have to have all of those things. Uh, everything costs a certain amount of points. Gun attachments also co cost a certain amount of points. And some things are free. Uh, so it really just depends on how you want to build your kit. Uh, one important thing to note is that generally you want to carry an explosive. Almost all of the objective game types require you to destroy a cache. And without a C4, a grenade, or a rocket launcher, you can't you can't destroy anything. So you basically <laughs> get to an objective, and you're just kind of like, well, I'm here. If anybody else wants to join me, let me just have unload. A grenade. <laughs> let me just unload my magazine into the cache. Yeah, you can't you can't destroy it with your bullets. Uh, yeah. So it's it's you have to have something to throw at it. Not all classes have the ability to have a C4 or a rocket launcher. Generally, you're only going to have a a grenade given to you. And if you don't carry the right vest, then you can't have two grenades. You only have one grenade. That would be me. You're just running. You're just a ticking time bomb. <laughs> I mean, what else do you need? Do the objective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you play as the security and then the insurgents. So um, if you're the security, it's always or was it insurgents? We kept yelling freedom for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you you either play as freedom or you play as the bad guys. <laughs> and uh, all the maps are based in basically you know somewhere in the Middle East and. Um, the, the maps are they're fairly large. They're a little bit confusing. They they appear much larger. Uh, they're almost bigger on the inside than the outside because the buildings have all of these oh accessory <laughs> rooms that are totally pointless. Yeah, we, uh, we nicknamed a building on District the Infinite Building because there's at least 
five or six staircases and so many hallways that have be- bedrooms and then another small hallway and then a bathroom. And you're like, why did I come all the way over here? There's no reason to be here. And yeah, you could camp there, but like it's not going to accomplish anything and it's towards kind your of primary cool. goal. It's like cool from a realism standpoint, but from a gameplay standpoint, and mechanics always win over realism, uh, it's just... it's unnecessarily complex so you end up with a lot of unused space on the map it's mostly also because you'll you'll see an objective on your map and you'll be trying to get there and then you'll go through a hallway (laughs) going oh clearly this is going to lead me to this point and then you get stuck in a dead end and you're like oh okay and then you try to backtrack down a staircase and then you realize you're halfway across the map and you're like i don't even know how i got here (laughs) and so you go back in the building go down a different hallway and you're just like the magic of the infinite building (laughs) it's so confusing (laughs) it Um. is an extra dimensional building (laughs) Uh, game modes we had some issues with some of the maps should not exist in some of the game modes um because they they just don't play well with each other but uh, i think page is it all maps are available on all game modes did we decide that yeah the only difference is that i think in co-op mode there's one map you can't play on but pretty much um all the multiplayer game modes they're all same map same same game modes or all yeah. maps same game modes and uh, and that does have some balance issues, um, especially on on modes like push where you're playing best two out of three. It's really unfortunate the way they designed it because you play as the same team for all three or all two of those rounds. So in games like Counter Strike, you're switching every other, uh, you know, you switch at the halfway point between the the match, so you can play as the other team. That way, if there's a balance issue, it's counteracted because you you both get to play as that team. Um, in this, it's it's just it's two that's... two rounds of offense, and you're like, great, we can never break A, and we haven't for the first ten minutes, and we won't for the next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so that is one of the downsides. Uh, I guess overall, I kind of, I like the game. I would always personally go play Counter-Strike Go before Insurgency, but Insurgency does have some cool points because it's kind of, if you like Call of Duty 4 on PC and you miss having that around, it has some similar elements in terms of speed, from Call of Duty 4, but then it also has these really tactical, like you, you have to slow down and kind of camp a corner aspects of Counter-Strike Go, and it is on the Source engine, so that makes sense. Um, Paige, I, what are your overall thoughts? I liked it. I know that every time you tried to get me to play Go, I was like, but can we play Insurgency instead? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm still trying to get over from playing on the console, and this game this game was easy, or it wasn't easy, but it was fun to play, uh, quick to pick up, uh, fun to play with other people, but it also, I guess, wasn't so much that you're playing against a bunch of other people who are really good at the game, and you were bad at the game. Uh, everyone's yeah. kind of on the same basic level. It's a lot. It, it, it since it's so teamwork based, it doesn't. You don't get those people who go in and get 50 kills. I think the most kills I've seen on this game so far are 18, and that's pretty high. Most people average around four to eight, and that's like in a good game where everything's kind of balanced, and you see a lot of like like actual actual fighting at like certain objective points, and not just like Oh, I got killed going across the street, and I have to wait for my next spawn wave. <laughs> <laughs> All of that. Yeah, and, and this is a really good point. You actually, a lot of the time, you don't end up get, racking up a ton of kills in a round, especially if you're playing properly and going for objectives. So uh, you can be zero kills and four deaths and still win because you actually blew up the objectives for your team. I would say it is probably worth buying it's only like 14 or 15 dollars or something it runs on the source engine if you like source games you'll probably like this um it's basically counter-strike except with sprinting and more damage (laughs) so the game can be frustrating like with the the maps and game mode mismatch but on the whole it's a pretty good game for 15 dollars it's it's probably an easy pickup uh, unless you really hate the like hardcore mode of you know a couple shots to kill but otherwise uh, otherwise, I'd say it's pretty good. So that is all for this. Check out the link in the description below for the full article, and we will see you all next time. Peace. Bye.